Kara Filofsky. It's two to nothing to Hartwick. The Warriors with a record of five and five, uncharacteristic for them during their long history and especially under the tenure of Jim Lennox as Chris Whitcomb walks back to defend the goal, which will be to our left and your left as you watch it here on cable 13. Raj Wakale heading down to the goal to our right. Heath Danford and Todd Jackson, the goal scorers in the first half. And as we get set, it was Chris Wright of Syracuse getting a start here in the second half. Underway now with the Warriors. Conway is number 11, a key man in that first half. The ball finally comes down to Paul Boyne. Boyne getting it ahead now to Heath Danford. Pressure. Right away, here's Hartwick applying the pressure. Whitcomb comes out to gather it in. That was a great attack by the Warriors. The buildup is the biggest key is to, is to Hartwick's attack right there. But again, a lot of the Orange defenders looked a little bit hesitant. They didn't know which player to mark up on. Uh, most importantly, you always need to go to the most dangerous guy, and not necessarily he's going to be the one. You may not be the guy with the ball. In the middle, they drill it off the foot there of uh, Ray Bruce. Steve Morris make it number seven. Hartwig gets it back. Here's a guy who's played quite a game so far. Todd Jackson, number eight. Played off the chest. Three men in front. Hard shot. Whitcomb dive save. And it's Paul Boyne again with a great shot. Chris Wickham coming up big. This is not, excuse me, check that was Mike Burns with that last shot, Dave. This is exactly what I'm sure Tim Hankinson told the Orangeman players at, at midfield that they don't want to do is let Hartwick come out there and build up momentum again. Going to Hislop. Gets it back. Now McCarthy's going to run it down and he'll send it back to his keeper. While Hartwick comes out, a chance to look at the last save by Whitcomb. Mike Burns does a great, does a great job just getting to that shot. And Chris Wickham, excellent in the goal so far. Dave, the shots that Hartwick has had this have had this evening have been in super, super opportunities. Hardly any wasted shots. Pascarella gets it back. Now in the middle for Bruce. Ball has some backspin on it, and Syracuse nearly was able to retain it. Todd Carpey did a great job just controlling the ball with that spin over there. Could have been a little bit dangerous with Kona Hislop attacking. Syracuse on the throw-in for Morris. Three men around him. He threads the needle with a pass, but it goes out. Oh, great little spin off there by Heath Stanford. And a nice move. There's a shot score. And it's Paul Conway, the freshman. His 11th goal of the freshman season. He wears number 11 from Oregon. And boy, you can sense that play might result in a goal. The way they had that throw in and the three man rush. The whole play started at midfield with Heath Stanford just skimming the ball off the side of his foot. And Paul Conway did a great job beating Fred Paulson, who was the last defender defensively for the Orange. His third goal right here, five minutes, in, not even five minutes, three minutes into the second half. It could possibly be the one that's going to break the Orangeman. Conway gets the goal. Dave, he's a freshman, 11 goals in his 11th game. That's a tremendous feat. Intended for Pascarella, intercepted. Taken back by the Orangemen. They loop it in front. Here's Bruce trying to play it ahead. Now Steve Morris is it taken away, and here's another attempt now. Paul Conway again with a three-on-two break. Conway, perfect feed, left wing, return. He should have shot. He had the far side of the cage. I, I, think, I think Paul Boyne was trying to shoot that one because you really don't pass that hard if you're trying to get the ball to your own teammate. I don't understand why Paul Boyne took the shot as quickly as he did. He had a little bit more time. 
Dave, what this third goal is going to do, as far as this game is concerned, is should open up the, the game big time. There's another shot goes through the football upright. Syracuse is now going to have to take some chances. Is that it? That's exactly what's going to happen. You're going to see more Orangemen getting up there on the attack. Syracuse may have better opportunities, but what it's going to do for them defensively is going to leave them vulnerable to the to the back. And twice, twice this evening, Hartwick has gotten goals off the counter. So we'll keep an eye on Syracuse, see if they do open up and attempt to take more chances offensively to get back in this game. Raj Wakel. And I don't think Harwick has really given up that many good opportunities where we can say, well, the Orange men just need to keep playing into this game. Harwick has done a super job defensively marking Steve Morris and Kona Hislop. Hartwick has had three shutouts this year over Illinois State two to nothing. They shut out Fordham four to nothing and they beat Colgate five to nothing. Turkey is in danger of losing two straight games, one to Cornell and one to Hartwick. That was a great ball by Mike Britton, but Steve Morris's run to the ball was just a little bit too soon. Right in front of the uh, Syracuse bench. They watch Hartwick get the ball back. Will McCarthy. McCarthy's from Oneana. John, what's it like to play there in that fever, soccer fever capital of Between New York State? Between Hartwick and Oneonta State, there is incredible soccer. Uh, going on, they call uh, they call Oneonta Soccer Town USA, and justifiably so, with two great powerhouses such as Oneonta State and Hartwood College, within a few mile radius of each other. Uh, it's uh, just a great feeling. It is a college town, but it's basically a soccer town. Imagine there are some tremendous youth programs in the area as well. Incredible youth programs. High bouncing shot, and Wakel pulls it in. Well, Geneva, New York certainly has a lot of lacrosse and Oneonta, known it's for soccer. soccer. And you go up north and Potsdam hockey territory. Pockets of interest around New York State, huh? Absolutely. Right here, Syracuse is down by a score of three to nothing. Mike Britton sends it back to Whitcomb. Coming into your picture. Pascarella to Paulson. They take it away from him. Jackson looks for the return and gets it. A great layout oh. by Heath Stanford. And Hartwick is on the attack again, and Todd Jackson making a super run. Hard to believe this is a five and five team. Todd Jackson started that whole rush by winning the ball way back on the 40 yard line and ended up making a run that, that left him on the 10 yard box, but most importantly, he didn't look dangerous, but he left an awful lot of space for other Hartwick players to run into. Mike Burns took that last shot for Hartwick. We're eight minutes into the second half. Hartwick has added one goal. They lead it three to nothing. They just have great individual skills. Absolutely. Dave, and you are 100% right. Oh, it is hard to believe job. they are five and five. And the blue shirts just seem to be getting to every loose ball. Absolutely. They're very quick. There's an example of that. No match. So we go over to. There's right. a good opportunity for Kona Hislop. He's got to take the man one on one and just beat him to the line. Three men converge on Kona. But if Syracuse has any hopes of trying to get back into this game with a little bit more than 36 and a half minutes left to play, they've got to get a little bit better play out of Steve Morris, and they've got to get a little bit better play out of Kona Hislop. Is Hartwick doing anything to take Morris out of the game? They're winning the midfield, and that's exactly where Steve Morris excels when he does play, by winning the midfield position and knocking the ball around. It looks as if Todd Jackson has done, has done a great job this evening matching up against the Morris from the midfield, and Todd Jackson is winning it. 
That was probably the toughest save that Wachale had to make in the game. I think so. Literally rose to the occasion. Rolls it out. Gets it back. Rolls it back once more. What's behind this particular strategy? Well, the Orange men are pushing a few guys up front. What they're going to try to do is try to get a couple guys towards the SU attack, open up the midfield a little bit more for a kick. Run, run, run up. Mascarella with Paulson. He'll take it to the middle himself. He'll try to get it to the near sideline. Now they do, where Charlie Mullen has it. Mullen looks for a return pass. Instead, it's Bruce in the middle. Here's an attempt for Sergio's hard shot right at the goalie, Wachiel, and he tries to outlet it in a hurry. A great shot by Steve Morris. Todd Jackson just got called for a handball, and I think he's going to get a warning from the referee because Sergius had a good opportunity for a quick counter. Now we'll get Morris or Pascarella. Kevin Johnston Dave is going to get called for the jumping in on that play. You don't want to do, you don't want to make silly fouls like a jumping in or by pushing when you're on the attack like that. And you're down three to nothing, 35 minutes left to play in the game. You want to keep yourself as simple as you possibly can. Build yourself up a little momentum. You've got to get the first goal before you can get the second or the third. And the Orange, the last few minutes have looked a little bit better at their attack. They need a little bit more of it, but Steve Morris and Kona Hislop got to start getting the ball a little bit more. Pursuit is Hislop. Look at the footwork. Faking. But it's blocked. Number 14, Todd Carpey, basically led Kona to the line on that play. Didn't give him uh, that much of an angle to come towards the middle. He sees that Kona has got a right foot, does not have a right foot, only a left foot. He pushed him towards the sidelines. Avoid the dangerous situation. Will he develop a right foot in the next couple of years? I would imagine so, with the type of speed and the skill that he does has, uh, that, that he does have, rather than Coach Hankinson will work on that right foot uh, in the off season. John, it seems as if every time he touches the ball, he's going to control it for a little while, put a few moves on, and try to create something. Does that create any kind of problem with teammates who, who look for a quick return pass? Jeez, I don't think so, to be honest with you, because simply because. Kona has always done a good a couple of one one twos, but the timing has to be right. The one two won't always be on, and a lot of times the way he's been beating Todd Carpenter this evening, uh, he needs to get that ball and, and let him go with it. Let him do some dancing with him. Play a little more ragged now, both ways. Syracuse down three to nothing as Tim Hankinson watches. Charlie Mullen with the ball now. Ralph Pascarella. Pascarella's home is Oceanside on Long Island. There's this lot contending there against Todd Carpey. Search is really applying more pressure now. That's why the game is a little more helter skelter. Paul Conway, the Hardwick striker, all the way back on defense, just knocking it up. Here comes Paulson back from the Orange men. Britton knocks it ahead. Mascarella broke it up from behind. Now Mullen controls. Mullen in a foot race to the ball will get there first. And Whitcomb comes out to help. Very fortunate Charlie was the first guy to the ball. Little Paul Boyne has been a pest in the Syracuse defense this whole evening. 13 minutes gone here in the second half. A three to nothing game. Hartwick in the lead. Dave Cohen and John Karafalovsky in the Carrier Dome. The ball taken away by McCarthy's trip. Hey, that was a good foul by Fred Paulson. Paul Boyne had the, had the advantage and was on the attack. I think Fred is going to get a yellow card, but I would have to, I'd have to agree with his decision to take the man down. That was a good foul. Yellow card issued to number 18, Fred Paulson. Just a warning.
going to Hislop with his coach. Yesterday, the two were playing a little one-on-one -on -one basketball with a soccer ball at Bailey Fieldhouse, and the coach leaned up on the player. <laughs> Kona, we talked about him being a left-footed player, a left-handed shooter, and uh, shooting is not his strong point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with, the, with the soccer ball in a basketball game. That's right. <laughs> that was a rocket we just saw Will McCarthy let go from about 35. Intercepted. One on four. Return is blocked. Here's McCarthy taken down. He gets back up, surrounds the ball against Mullen, puts it in front. Pasquarella intercepts, redirects it. Paul Boyne did a great job, was knocked down by Charlie Mullen, got right back up and won the ball away from him. The head there of uh, David Gregson, Mike Britton, down the sideline. It's kept in bounds. Left foot of the head, knocked out of there by Mullen. Steve Morris, been quiet for quite a while. Bodies go down, and what's it going to be? I think Steve Morris is going to be called for that last play for a push Mike. after the back nine. Mike Burns and Todd Jackson is going to take this free kick. I don't think he's going to tie, he's going to try another long one. He's a good 38 yards out. 37. That Mike Burns will try it. 16. 16 rather, excuse me. Kept in, blooped in the air, played by Bruce. Bruce up ahead for Hislop. Wow, he's got an overdrive. Chris Gold did a super job matching up with Kona Hislop as far as speed was concerned on that one. Gregson. Hartwich sends it back to Raj Wakale. Gregson called for it on the near sideline. There he is at the bottom of your screen. 29 minutes to go in the game. A great boot. Yeah. Well, really carried that time. Mullen puts his head down, charging like a bull. Intercepted, though, by Temperley. Simon Temperley. Paulson, the last line of defense, that could have been trouble if it got by him. Almost a great service by Simon Temperley on that play. Just a little bit too low. Nice return by Wright on the touch there. Beautiful one, too, by Chris Wright and Kevin Johnson. There's a little bloop ahead. Spin came back, and the shot is wide. That spin worked against Syracuse that time. Dave, the linesman called... A goal kick, and I thought I saw the record pointing towards the corner, but I guess they corrected each other. And it goes up in the seats off the deflection. Hartwick will throw it in. Gregson. Now Chris Goals, number six. Chris Goals has one goal in his career at Hartwood. Johnston back to Britain. It was a nice kick by Britain to get that ball down here. That was a great one touch by Mike Britton to Steve Morris who flicked it on. A little bit too late. And Paul Conway and here he comes. The Conway. This is danger anytime he touches it for Syracuse. Whitcomb comes out with some momentum, slows down now. Paul just a little bit over anxious on that play, trying to see the perfect pass over to over to number 18, Paul Boyne. <laughs> Let him a little bit too far. Cross field goes Whitcomb to Britton. 
Britton overshoots Bruce just slightly. Chris Wright is going to come back, number 10. Wright is a freshman out of Glastonbury, Connecticut. One of two uh, Syracuse players, Steve uh, Polnell, backup keeper, also from Glastonbury, also a freshman. He's six feet four. Britton left puts it out. Headed right. back right. by Hartwick. Will Wright. Will McCarthy gets it now. Clear. Left footer in front. Syracuse kicks it out of there. Kept in by goals. Balson. Hardwick has done a good job in the second half after that second goal uh, of the up tempo. They haven't fallen back into a shell. Which, which you tend to see with many teams with a three goal lead. They've kept up a good, a good intensity. This is Gregson going right and kicking left. This is dangerous because it's the man who hit that one. Was a, could have been very dangerous. Todd Jackson who hit that great bomb in the first half. Struck it just a little bit too hard in front of him. Now Chris Wright. Here's a pass right in front for an opportunity. Can he turn around and shoot? He does. And it's deflected wide by the goalie, Joaquin. Dave, that was a, that was a great buildup by the Orange. Kevin Johnson just got turned around. I thought I saw the linesman on the side raise his flag for offside. The referee overruled the play. A very close call. The Orange need to get a few of those to get back into this game. That was a tough chance for Johnson. He had to get himself turned around and kind of screw his pivot foot in the ground at the same time. Absolutely. You have to credit the Hartwick defenders, though, for making them do all that turning. Under 25 minutes to go in a 3 nothing game. Here's Johnson back on the attack. Johnson with Nino Galich to his right. Gives it up to Galich. He doesn't play and it goes out of bounds. Inbounded quickly by Hartwick. They don't waste any time, do they? No, they don't. The counter is, is an incredible lethal lethal weapon, if you will, because people don't expect it to come so quickly. You might think with a lead they would be content to take as much time every time, but they don't. It's not it's not a trademark of a Hartwick team just to give up even just because it's a three to nothing. There comes Wright, shoots and it's saved. That was as close as Syracuse has come to a score. That's it. I guess I was going to mention whether Raj Wakal was going to be was going to be ready for a shot. We see number 10 Simon Temperley down for the Warriors, but Raj looked awfully sharp, even though he hasn't seen much action. Here's that shot coming up. Chris Wright does a good job of getting full leg on it. That was kind of an in-between bounce. Didn't really wind up and fire. He had to play it in midair. No, I don't think he had as much time as he possibly thought. Okay, okay, he's enough. Let's go. Let's get this court. Deverly is down about 30 yards in front of the Hartwick net. And we'll remind you that coming up next on Super Sports Football, Penn State and Syracuse. Let's go, guys. You want everybody picked up? David Irish checking into the game for the first time. Irish saw action in the last contest and went over Harvard. He's been out for the injured spot. Now we'll have the kick. Knocked out of there nicely by Hartwood. Not a good corner. Not a good corner as far as the Orange are concerned. They got to get the ball deep. This could be very dangerous and oh, coming out to smother it. The cage is empty. And the Charlie Mullen. Charlie Mullen missed the missed the goal. The referee that's closest to us here, Dave, called the play offside. I thought it was a delayed call. In the meantime, the keeper is down and hurt. Why don't you recap that flurry as to what happened, John? Well, it was, a, it was I thought, a very poor corner by the Orange. The ball was struck uh, a little bit too soft by Steve Morris. 
What Hartwick tried to do is push everybody up and catch the Orangemen on an offside play. There's always going to be one guy who's going to be a little bit more lazier than the other people who's going to keep him on it. And I thought the Orange were, were onside. The referee was very slow in reacting to that offside call. Uh, and once the goalie, Raj Wakali, made up his mind to come out for the ball, he couldn't come out and stop and go back. He didn't have enough time. All of a sudden, everybody from Hartwick sprinted upfield. And if you're an Orangeman, your main concern is just to make sure that you stay on, on sides and have a defender run through. Very quickly now, Hartwick tries to warm up a backup keeper. Dave, we're going to see a replay. Mike Britton is just basically going to flight the ball as all the Hartwick players are running forward. And Charlie Mullen is going to be the man who's going to get to it first. We're going to see a collision with the goalie and Raj Wakali and Charlie Mullen. Probably his ankle just got stuck in the turf. Mullen almost looked like he gave up on the shot, like he stopped. Was that ball still alive? It was still. I, I, would, I would probably imagine that he heard the whistle on that play. I would hope that he had heard the whistle because if that was... <laughs> That's going to be it for Raj Wakale. He's going to be carried off the field. And that's really too bad. You hate to see this happen. He's played a great game so far, uh, just keeping his team basically mentally into the game. His right ankle, I believe. Raj Wakale, a sophomore out of uh, Bramley, Ontario. Many Canadians in the game. Now in goal for Hartwick, John Albert. Also into the game for Syracuse, number eight, Will Pivot. We're going to check on the keeper coming in now for Hartwick. They've got several listed on their roster. John Albert is the goalie coming in, the junior. John Albert, a junior from right here in Syracuse. A name a little bit unfamiliar. Well, then again, I haven't involved in the soccer scene that long, you know. <laughs> it is three to nothing. Hartwick in the lead. Howard being called for a push on that last play. Well, John Albert played uh, soccer and basketball at Henninger High School. And I thought you knew every goalie in this area. Well, there's <laughs> one I forgot about. <laughs> I guess you haven't beaten him in a game, have you? Probably not. Syracuse has 22 minutes to try to get back in this game. Albert plays the rolling ball. I shouldn't be so surprised because we, I can recall doing a basketball game with John playing. A nice boot by him. Syracuse now opening it up, trying to take some more chances, and here's a good man to take a chance with. Hislop. Kona's shot deflected, and Albert sprawls and gets there. Boy, Kona's got that speed. He's so dangerous. Number 14, Todd Carby. Doing a super job. Giving him, you've got to give him a little bit of room just because it's too quick. You don't want to end up diving in. You're going to get beaten. Kona's in on his alone. Here's the corner. Mullins, the header. Goes out of bounds. You know what I'd like to see? Kona is so quick, I'd like to see a little more of a hesitation. A little stop and go. Absolutely. And if you do something like that, well, one of the problems that I have noticed in what Kona is doing this evening is, is he's been receiving the ball and he's been letting the defender push him towards the sideline. As an attacker, when you receive the ball, the first thing you should do is go straight to goal because you're going to get the defender starting to back up on you. 
and then you could beat him to either side. If you're taking me on, Dave, but I'm running backwards instead of pushing you to the side, it's a little bit different. And of course, the defender uses the sideline as another defender. Oh, absolutely. And that's exactly what Todd Carpey has done this evening to defend Kona. But that's something I'm sure Coach Hankinson will develop with him uh, later on. He's a freshman, and he's doing a super job uh, as a freshman. 20 minutes to go, 3 to nothing, Hartwick. Britain intercepted by Hartwick. Chris Whitcomb. Dangerous Paul Conway. Look at it, playing catch with himself. Oh, he got a foot right in the face. And he goes down. And inverted sure. for Ray Bruce. I'm sure we're going to get a card here. May have gotten into the chest. Kevin Johnson getting into a pushing match with Keith Danford. Chris Goals trying to, we just saw a little bit of a replay. It was very unfortunate that Kevin did get struck like that. It was inadvertent. I would have to say that it was. Raymond Bruce is gonna get that American, the American, American Express card against one more <laughs> card. He just got the visa, gold visa, Dave, and American Express is next. He does not have card blanche. I don't think so. Keep going, come on, keep going. Well, Hartwick may come out of the dome with a convincing win, but they may have a couple of injured players. Absolutely, and you hate to see, especially out of that whole bunch who have took the Knox this evening to be uh, your goalie if you're Jim Lennox. Now Will McCarthy. Where? Got it deep. Boynes in pursuit, trying to keep it inbound. I guess Paul, the official had a good view of that. Paul Boy just did a super job getting to that ball. One official calling for the other. Wonder what this is about. I would imagine that Paul Boy probably said something to Mr. Procopio, who's the linesman on the other side. Uh, and I believe we're going to see another card come out. This referee doesn't, I guess, doesn't even check your credit resources. He just <laughs> gives you the cards right out freely. One word, and you get the card. Nineteen minutes to go. No time. Off the foot of the Hobart player and out. Dave, what we're starting to see a little bit right now is is a little bit of frustration starting to set in with the Orangemen. Uh, they've been badly outplayed by these Hardwick Warriors. Hardwick came into came into tonight's game with a five and five record. Uh, Syracuse, number eight in the country, number one of the region, ten to three. A great year going. Uh, Harwick just did a good job coming out here and taking it to the Orangemen. And it's a 3-0 three, three to zero ball game with 18 and a half minutes left. We're going to start seeing a lot of chippy fouls. And just oh. to give you an idea of just how much trouble the Orangemen have been having this evening, Chris Wickham just threw that ball off the back of Charlie Mullen. But that's an indication of what's been happening tonight. Well, perhaps sometime in the future they'll be able to laugh about that. But hopefully this game be... certainly has not been a laughing matter for sure. No, I don't think so. Hopefully they can laugh at it as early as tomorrow because once this game is over, you have to get ready for another one, uh, and, you know, if you're a ball player out there. Syracuse has had a very busy schedule. They have. Coach Hankinson has upgraded the schedule uh, by getting a, almost every, every team, and I believe every team on their schedule, is a Division I team. I know that's something that he was looking forward to doing uh, for quite a while now, but uh, you can't expect a team uh, 
of a Hartwick with a 5-5 five and five record to come in here and just basically just lay down uh, and say, okay, since you guys are number eight and number one respectively in the region, you're better. Syracuse had one stretch where I believe they played three games in about five days. It's not it's not uncommon to see something like that early in the season, Dave. Uh, I would most schools do go through that. As we see a nice shot by Charlie Mullen, just wasn't able to get connect full uh, his full leg on it. Couldn't get extension actually uh, to get it out to him. By the time they play again after this, they will have had four days off between the Hartwick and Colgate games, the next game at Colgate. I'm sure it's something that Coach Hankinson is going to uh, give the Orangemen a day or two rest just so they can uh, collect themselves and uh, let all any injuries or nagging bruises uh, heal. So you don't want to give them too much time off because they'll end up thinking about this game too much. There's an attempt coming, broken up nicely by Galich. Whitcomb, one bounce outlet, basketball style. That was a nice play by Nino, tracking his man all the way back to the goal. And here comes Nino, flying upfield, trying to get it ahead, but it's too far. Intended there for Bill Tibbet, and out of bounds. Syracuse has some fresh legs in the game here, with 16 minutes and 15 seconds to go. Well, they need to do anything they possibly can at this point to get that to get the first goal. Nearly a hand ball there by Nino Galich. After this game, Syracuse will have two more home contests, one against Seton Hall at Coin Field on October 15th in the final home game in the Dome. Here's an attempt from in close, and John Albert against Hislop gathers it in. Oneana will be in the Dome on October the 25th. Dave and John Albert looked awfully good on that last play. Shows a lot of confidence and some and good strength going up for that ball. He had a big smile on his face when he was sent into the game, obviously having a chance to play here in his hometown. In his hometown, yeah. And if the score remains like this, Raj Rakali will get the win and John Abro will get the save. Mullen goes down. That last save by John Albert reminds me that he was a fine rebounder as a basketball player in Henniger. I don't know why I drew a blank when he came in the game. You have no excuse. Dave, Dave, Dave. <laughs> Under 15 minutes now to go. Probably doing a good job spreading this game out. Now we really haven't had the opportunity to call Steve Morris's name very often. And we talked about who we really needed to see big time into this ball game. Here's a return shot by Bruce from off side. The ball is wide. And we're seeing some wide open play now, if not great offensive play. That last shot was by Steve Morris. Just got underneath the ball. But Steve Morris and Kona Hislop are the big guns for the Orange. Harwick has done a good job keeping uh, keeping uh, both players down today. Um, I don't think we saw the quality game that Steve Morris is capable of playing, and especially in as important position as he has a center midfielder uh, and, and as the main distributor of the ball. As Pasquarello went up, he was bumped by Boyne. Syracuse gets it back. Johnson with a spin move goes down as he tried to dish it off. And we're going to see another. Up. We're going to see another card on Paul Conway this time. I think it's the the repayment of that one foul between Raymond Bruce and Kevin Johnson that 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 Paul Conway took about five minutes ago, and he's going to get a yellow card. Conway did his, express his regret there as he walked by the fallen Syracuse player. Shook his hand. Number 11, Paul Conway. I'm sure he said, I'm really sorry I didn't mean it, but I'm getting you back for what you did to me. Hislop went up for the header. Hislop with a shot, and Albert's there at the corner. Uh, an excellent opportunity for, for Kona on that play. Uh, he just didn't strike the ball well. Enzo look as Albert knocked it out of there. Here he is again. Clock runs with 13.25 to go. 
We're going to get a foul on Charlie Mullen. The game at this point has just started to become a little bit chippy. Jackson. A brilliant move. Excellent move on the far side by number 16, Mike Burns. Who beats his man. A beautiful spin move by number 16, Mike Burns, a freshman from Marlboro, Massachusetts. Beat two SU defenders. Here's a look at the freshman. Inside, inside. If we see Todd Jackson and all the rest of the Hartman guys just taking their time. William Montez de Oka checks in now for Syracuse. Senior out of Carl Gables, Florida. Hartwick doing that short corner again. And Dave, you can see the man advantage does happen. Hartwick's going to give it up. Mike Burns did a good job receiving that ball and going around Todd Jackson, but he just forgot to get back on side. And that call goes against uh, David Gregson. Big challenge right in the middle of the field by David. Syracuse wasting no time now. And Hartwick there to intercept. Conway, number 11, has it taken away by Hislop. Nice pass up ahead, but it's stolen back by McCarthy. And now here come the blue-shirted Warriors. An excellent push. run by Mike Burns. Burns intended for Conway, give it up short. That really is too bad because he did a super job running with the ball for about 40 yards. That last pass is, is basically what, what's been wrong with the Orange this evening. They've had a number of exceptional opportunities of bringing the ball up, but it's that one final pass with the last shot that really doesn't get any results. Now here comes Jackson. He's been a key performer all night. Nice That's a lead. great, great ball. Here's the shot, and it's wide. Mike Burns taking that shot from the right side. I don't particularly think he has that good of an angle against Chris. Now 10 minutes and 40 seconds remaining in a three to nothing game. The goal scoring has come early in each half. Two within the first 10 minutes of the first half and <laughs> one coming after eight minutes were gone in the second half. Beautiful little skill, skill work there by Kona right in front of the orange bench. That's a little funny to see a game indoors and see players huddled on the bench with full length parkers. <laughs> But it is cool in the dome. Cool. I'm wearing long jazz. Right now. This game coming just what five days after the last football game in which uh, it was said to be sauna like in the dome. Absolutely. There's a pretty good rush coming from David Irish. David Irish doing a good job beating his man. Nice pass. David Boyd in front of the goal. Oh, it's blocked, but the rebound is in. Four to nothing, Hartwick. On the goal by number 14, Todd Carpey. He deserves it. He made a great rush all the way up to the field. But the whole play started right at midfield with David Irish beating William Montez Doka, getting it across to Paul Boyd. Carpey had the easy job just finishing it. He's played a great game this evening. The senior from Willington, Connecticut, has done a super job in marking Kona Hislop. Nine and a half minutes left. Hartwick is up four to zero. And most of that noise you hear is from the large contingent of Hartwick fans who made the trip over here to the Carrier Dome. And I'm sure this trip has been really worthwhile for them. Their team has played an exceptional game. You wonder, John, what will happen within the rankings in New York State with Syracuse being number one and Hartwick number 10. And Hartwick coming into Syracuse's home and decisively beating the Orangemen. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, but also who's been behind and in front of Hartwick also is going to make a difference as far as those rankings are concerned. 
personally, I've never ever liked the rankings or never thought that much of them, uh, simply due to the who's the best and who's the worst uh, in something like that. Pair of players go down. Pascarella for the Orange win. Hartwick traditionally has been a team that finishes strongly. Absolutely. We talked about it. This game is almost a reversal of teams. Usually it's it's Hartwick who's at the top, and Syracuse and all the other teams are doing the chasing uh, of the NCAA bids. Yeah, there have been years when Syracuse made a late bid but didn't get it. Absolutely. And you know, Hartwick will certainly get every consideration well, with, with their a rich tradition. Well, if they finish this game 4-0 to zero against the number one team, I don't know. It could be a big lift. It could be something that they could that they've been waiting to happen at this point to uh, a spark basically to get them rolling. Mike Ritten. Will McCarthy's going to run it down. John Albert there to help out. Eight minutes, ten seconds remaining. You wonder if the Syracuse players, John, were thinking, well, we've got the record, we've got the home field, we've got things going our way. This is obviously not one of Hartwick's better teams. But you got to do more than show up. Absolutely. Well, I, maybe, I'm sure the players may have been thinking that. I'm positive Coach Hankinson wasn't thinking that. That 5-5 five and five record is deceiving because the wins and the losses that they have been getting have been against quality teams. Galich, getting a little too cute, didn't get a shot away. And it's that man again, number nine, David Irish, is going to start this rush. Irish has a man open on his left. He goes that way, dealing it off to Heath Danford. Heath Danford. Danford bloops it in front from the weak side. Oh, and right in front, the shot too high. I think David Boyne was just too close to miss. If you can be. Yeah. We're going to see a replay. This whole cross from Heath Stanford was basically an extension of David Irish's run of about 30 yards and all alone. You know, he knew as soon as he kicked it, he knew he blew it. Yes. Santo Russo in the game now for the first time. Sophomore out of Brooklyn. Six and a half minutes to go. Whitcomb's gone all the way as a Syracuse goalkeeper. John Albert taking over midway through the second half for the injured Raj Wachale. There's a header, and it's wide as Albert had it lined up all the way. A good header by, by, by Charlie Mullen. Jackson, Conway, and Carpy were the goals in this game. Freshman, two sophomores, and a senior. And there are only three seniors on the Hartwick team. The goals have been well balanced. Syracuse will throw in quickly now. Bill Tibbet intercepted by Hartwick. Regained by Tibbet, hustling out of the corner. What amounts to a corner kick. The header is high. Off of Charlie Mullen. That was a, a great car, a great cross by Tibbet. Charlie Mullen just getting up in the air a little bit too late. Here's a replay. Bill Tibbet did a great job winning the ball back from number 19, Jason Black for Hartwick. Charlie Mullen just getting a little bit underneath that ball. 
it's very important when you're an attacker heading the ball on net that you head the ball down instead of up. Is that easier said than done? Absolutely, it should be. <laughs> How do you do that? You got to leap in the air, line up the ball, and make sure you're heading it on the way down. Dave, timing is very important when you do something like that. You have to be in the air, waiting for that ball basically to hit you. Uh, kind of like an alley oop with your hand, isn't it? Pretty much. Syracuse now directing many a shot at the net, but Albert really has not had to make anything sensational. I'm, I'm sure the Orange men are just trying to avoid the shutout. Three and a half minutes to go. Syracuse applying all sorts of pressure. They want to at least get on the scoreboard. Mullen has been a demon. Probably been the hardest working Syracuse player out there. Absolutely. He's played a very good game for the Orange. They throw it into the corner intending for Bruce. Trying to use his body to get some operating room. Shot him out. Hartwick's ball. Dave Hartwick has done a great job coming here into the Dome. They played an outstanding game, that 5-5 five and five record. It's hard to imagine how they could have five losses after seeing this performance. Now down to two and a half minutes to go after this run. Hartwick home against... Army, then Penn State, then Cornell. So they've got three home games in a row. And a road game at Adolphi, home game with Hofstra, road game at LIU, and then they close out against Brooklyn College of Princeton. So the bulk of their schedule is at home. A great schedule. When you take a look at, at the schedule of the University of Virginia, St. Francis, Fordham, or Philadelphia, Textile, Columbia, all the way down to Penn State, SU, Cornell. An incredible schedule. Almost every single team on our schedule is a viable top 20 team or as one time or another uh, been in the top 20. Two minutes to go as Galich works one against two. Passed by Johnson. Here's Britton's shot. Way wide. Mike Britton striking that ball with his left foot. It was a good shot. Steve Morris basically giving him a, a handshake saying, hey, good try. Crowd really enjoying this one. Pastorella to Mullen. Mullen taking it to the middle. Here's a hard shot, and this one is wide. Charlie just a little bit too far out. That shot came from about 35. You saw Todd Jackson do it earlier. Maybe he had an idea. We're under two minutes to go. could pack another one on here in the closing seconds. Absolutely. The Orange men have got a lot of people up front. Dave, I think it's going to be at any second, and there it is. That's it. And time has run out. Hartwick records the four to nothing shutout against Syracuse. Raj Wakel and John Albert combining in the net. Syracuse losing their second game in a row. And Hartwick now up in their record to six and five. Syracuse now on the season 10 and four. Back-to-back -back losses undoubtedly will drop them out of the top 10. Steve Morris, a dejected Syracuse player, and just now climbing off the turf. Hartwick wins it over Syracuse. Final score, four to nothing. This is Dave Cohen. Thank you for joining us and reminding you to be with us on many of these super...